if you can get five people to the polls, that's five more people and five more people. And that is the margin of victory in this election. The Virginia governor's race is getting tighter as Election Day nears. And Democrats are bringing in big names to rally support. It starts here in Virginia. It starts here in Fairfax. It starts here in this election. Four years after leaving office, former governor, Democrat Terry McAuliffe, wants his seat back. 102,000 doors knocked down this weekend. Virginia is the only state that prohibits governors from serving back-to-back -back terms. There's nothing that McAuliffe is running on that really separates very far from the Northam administration. And so... The race really feels like uh, a race where we have an incumbent running, uh, even though that's not actually the case. I'm the first governor in America after the historic Supreme Court ruling to perform a gay marriage in the United States of America. Terry McCullum was governor before and he did a good job. He brought in hundreds of jobs. I, I think he will do that again and we need him. I think people will be looking to the Commonwealth to say, can we win elsewhere? So this is very important. Republicans are hoping voters are in the mood for change. Their candidate is Glenn Youngkin, a former CEO of the Carlisle Group and a political newcomer. He is not a career politician. He's honest, he's got a great background, he has a good family, he's smart, and he's going to make some good decisions that are going to help Virginia get back on track. This race has got the full attention of the entire United States of America. Youngkin is right. People all over the country are paying attention to Virginia. We are from Alabama, the mighty Alabama strike force. There are 20 of us here in Virginia Beach. We're all volunteers. And they've come from all over to knock on doors for Yunkin in the Tidewater region. This race is important. Like, we have a nation to save, period. Like Trump, he's a businessman. He's ultra conservative, and I consider myself ultra conservative. Several things hit my hot button, the education issue, taxation, um, and, the, and the abortion issue. Oh God, I can hardly talk about that without crying. Republicans haven't won a statewide race here since 2012, but with President Biden's poll numbers lagging, they see a chance to build momentum ahead of next year's midterms. We'll be really watching to see if any of this uh, larger, broader national unpopularity for Democrats uh, spills down into these more local races. Virginia is an interesting test case for this, too, because Virginia is demographically strongly Democratic. It has uh, all the features that you would expect from a good Democratic state. Well-defined urban and suburban areas in the northern part of the state. It has uh, relatively shrinking rural areas where typically GOP strongholds. But it's certainly possible that a moderate Republican like Glenn Youngkin could actually pick up enough votes here to win. For Youngkin, the race is a delicate balancing act. He needs Trump voters to turn out in force if he is to triumph. But he also risks alienating more moderate voters if he veers too far to the right. I am winning the independent votes by 10 at least. And this is what he's seeing as well. And this is why he's inviting anybody he can get. And McAuliffe never misses an opportunity to bring up Trump, a state he lost by 10 points last year. We want to keep our schools open and we want to keep our economy strong. That will not happen with Glenn Youngkin, who's just got a Donald Trump and Betsy DeVos education plan and a Donald Trump anti-vaxxer rhetoric. That's just not going to work here in Virginia. You can see this playing out in uh, Terry McAuliffe's campaign strategy, right? He's trying to tie Glenn Youngkin to Trump whenever he can because Trump is uh, politically a, a quite a bit unpalatable in Virginia. And you saw this play out in 2020 where these college educated white voters in Northern Virginia and in the Tidewater region uh, really broke heavily for Biden where they had not done that in 2016. The election here on November 2nd will be the first major test for Democrats in the post-Trump era. A loss or even a narrow win could spell trouble in 2022 and beyond. Help us organize your five friends.